Hello, class. Today, we will be learning about humans. Specifically, things humans throw at each other. From the humble rock to the hypersonic ballistic thermonuclear rocks of the modern era, humans have been throwing things at each other for a long time. So sit tight, Banana Bite, because we're about to chart a course through all the things humans chuck at each other, from before they could write till tonight. Ah, the good old days, when instead of agreeing to disagree, discussions could be settled with a well-aimed rock. Throwing things are one of the few tasks humans beat gorillas at, because of their unnatural and malformed shoulder joints that easily pop out. Who knows why humans developed these? Maybe to throw rocks at dino that were eating them left and right? Regardless, small rocks were probably the first things humans and human ancestors threw at each other. Say hello to the spear, humanity's first foray into the world of DIY piercing damage. It's a stick, with a pointy end. Ingenious. The concept was pretty simple. You take a long stick, tie a pointy rock to the end of it, and then you throw it. It was kind of like a very long, very pointy game of fetch. Only instead of a dog, you're playing with an angry mammoth, or, you know, Dave from the neighboring tribe. But don't let its simplicity fool you. The spear was a game changer. Suddenly, humans could hunt animals larger than them and fend off superior simians from a distance. While many hominids had them, only Homo sapiens ran around chucking them at megafauna and other hominids like nobody's business. Very rude! A step up in range from the spear, the bow and arrow revolutionized throwing pointy stuff. With increased accuracy, range, and so easy to use even puny humans can do it, the bow and arrow was the go-to tiny spear thrower for thousands of years. From a physics perspective, flat bows were more energy efficient as compared to round bows like the English longbow. Other developments, like the CR, allowed relatively small bows to penetrate armor and remain relevant until economics drove the bow into irrelevance for human physical discussions. Apparently, the bow was too complicated and required more practice than many tiny brain weak humans could manage, because the Chinese humans made the whole process even easier around 400 BCE. The crossbow was a bow attached to a stick that would hold the bow drawn so the hapless human could hold it up to his face and aim and actually hit what he was looking at, making noobs far more dangerous. While it had often less range than a bow, Crossbows tended to penetrate armor even better than the bow, because its shorter, fatter bolts had more weight closer to the center of mass, making the bolts less likely to deflect. The Greek humans also invented a crossbow around 400 BCE, called the Gastrophetes, but Europeans generally abandoned the weapon until the Middle Ages because they were, like many humans, not intelligent. Around 399 BCE, the Greeks finally got on board with the bigger is better idea, reversing years of human design decline. The ballista is essentially a giant crossbow that launches massive bolts at humans or stones at buildings. Picture the ancient Greeks, and later the Romans, eating massive spears at their enemies, and you've got the idea. They were primarily used in sieges to knock down walls and shower the enemy with a hail of projectiles. And let me tell you, nothing says knock knock quite like a boulder crashing through your front door. Instead of being powered by a bending piece of wood or metal, the ballista was powered by twisted cow sinew, the twisting of which could cause the whole weapon to implode under its own pressure. The whole system was exceedingly complicated for its day, and was limited in power by the materials used to build it, meaning there was an upper limit for the size you could build these things. Humans really like burning things. Forests, weeds. But they've always struggled to give each other the old burn and spurn because they aren't too flammable. The Byzantines fixed this in the 7th century. Picture this. You're a fancy Byzantine sailor in 672 CE, and you've got a bunch of enemy ships coming your way. What do you do? Well, if you've got some of that good old Greek fire handy, you're about to turn the sea into a barbecue. The Byzantine flamethrower, or Greek fire as it's sometimes called, was the early medieval equivalent of a flamethrower. 
a pressurized siphon would spew out sticky, flammable liquid that was then set ablaze by a pilot light. Fun fact, this stuff could stay lit even on water. It was basically like throwing napalm at your enemies. Now this Greek fire was the stuff of nightmares for the caliphate going up against the Byzantines. This was sea warfare with a twist. And by twist, I mean turning your enemies into a screaming, flaming, flailing mess. Fortunately, its initial use was limited to the calm, windless waters of the Bosphorus, lest this floating spicy sauce find its way back to your own little island made of cloth and wood. Around the 10th century CE, the Islamic Caliphate figured out a way of applying Greek fire directly to the Byzantines that didn't involve self-immolation, putting this scorching serum in pots of differing diameters that they could fling at them. What if you could use rocks to launch rocks? That rockception is the counterweight trebuchet, the 12th century's answer to how can we launch stuff but like way further? This medieval death machine was perfect for hurling cows, pianos, and even the occasional 90 kilogram stone over 300 meters. The trebuchet was essentially a lever in a sling. One end of the lever had a huge rock counterweight, and the other end had a sling with a projectile of your choice. Usually a big old rock, but sometimes they got creative. Dead animals, those fiery pots we just talked about, heck, even live prisoners if you were feeling particularly nasty. And of course, no cow sinew needed to power it. You could make them as big as you wanted. Trebuchets were the stars of the siege warfare show. They could hurl heavy projectiles over great distances, smashing through walls and causing all kinds of mayhem. Imagine trying to have a quiet dinner in your castle with your significant other, and suddenly a diseased cow comes crashing through the roof. Talk about a mood killer. Boom! The hand cannon, or handgun, is the grandpappy of all firearms. Medieval humans attempt at saying, we want to throw stuff at each other, but with explosions. The hand cannon was essentially a portable tube of death on a stick. You'd load it up with gunpowder and a projectile, usually a round stone, or later, an iron ball. Then, you'd point it at whatever you didn't like, stick a fuse in the hole, and boom! Instant chaos. It was a heavy, unwieldy, and inaccurate device, and they were about as safe as juggling knives. But the hand cannon marked the spark, pun intended, igniting a whole new era of ballistics. Alright class, time to talk about the rocket. Because who doesn't like a little fire and brimstone, am I right? Basically, the concept is you've got a tube filled with combustible material and a hole on one end. You light it up, and the rapid expulsion of gases from one end propels it in the opposite direction. It's all very scientific and stuff. While originally used as entertainment, as you can imagine, humans pretty quickly realized that these fun little light shows could also be used to deliver a fiery surprise to their enemies. And thus, warfare got a lot more explosive. Sometimes they threw arrows. Sometimes they threw exploding warheads. The possibilities were endless. Eventually, if humans weren't tossing it with a gun, they were doing it with a rocket. One of the roughly two ways humans have settled on in the modern era. The hand cannon's cooler, more refined sibling, the arquebus featured a longer tube held steady on a monopod, with a larger iron ball and a lit match on a lever, ingeniously dubbed the matchlock, to set this boomstick a spewing, rather than the previous and less reliable method of hand insertion. It was far more effective against armor, meaning everyone took the previous armor everywhere method and limited it to the front chest and head to prevent the weak humans from being crushed under its weight. It caused warfare to turn into a sort of rock paper scissors where arquebusiers would swiss cheese the pikemen, cavalry would throw the arquebusiers off hell in a cell to plummet 16 feet through the announcer's table, and pikemen would point the cavalry to the pearly gates. Hmm? Well, that's the bell. As you can see, our chart empirically shows that, so far, humans prefer penetration, not uncommon for a creature's early years. That's it for today. Oh, you wanted through the present day? Well, too bad! Come back next time! Thanks for watching my first video, human. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe and like buttons down below. And remember, 
Spend fitties, pet kitties, and always treat other humans with respect.